in Omero Web. Are you are you with the same on the same footing with me, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, yeah, back in Omero Web, I'm logged in as trainer one. You are logged in as user, whatever, and you have a nice scientific name here on the top right. Some of you will be, let's say, Charles Darwin or whatever. I was uh, Iran Joliot Curie uh, a second ago. And you are browsing the data of yourself in this case is fine. Uh, you have here the, the same name as uh, as here, okay? And then um, let me go just through for what we have here. So these uh, images, by the way, all imported in place, uh, except for those which are just imported in front of you. Um, they are um, of differing, uh, uh, file formats. This is the DICOM, which I was showing in the presentation. Uh, here we have some uh, conventional microscopy images uh, from uh, in a Delta Vision format, and uh, there are some deconvolution images together with them, uh, which were also imported. Here are some uh, whole slide imaging formats. Uh, in this case, it's SVS uh, and pathology uh, images. Uh, really seriously big. This one has something like 100,000 by 50,000 pixels. Okay. And uh, they are side by side with um, high content screening uh, images, uh, which are in the screenplay 12 format. So this is basically the 96 well plate and you have an automatic microscope, which will shoot a, an image in each well or more images in each well. And then uh, it stores them in uh, some formats like uh, Flex or Operetta, and uh, the bioformats are then able to import the whole beast uh, with the superstructure containing the wells and images in them into Omero, and that's how it looks like. Okay, so all these formats and uh, very different file formats are are side by side here. Um, I will return to to the conventional images. Uh, how is it possible? Well, again, the uh, Java library called Bioformats is uh, reading those images on the fly as I, for example, double click on it and it opens in a full viewer. Then the Bioformats is called and the Bioformats library is consisting out of readers and the Bioformats library will pick a appropriate reader to read the image I just clicked on. In this case, it would be a DV reader and uh, on the fly uh, reads the original file, which is stored in the Omero server uh, and displays it in the full viewer of Omero, which would be here the Omero iViewer. We will see that in the second. And the same uh, applies for the DICOM images I just showed you in the second. So again, if I double click, then the bioformats picks the right reader, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, in this manner, we really store the original data, and we don't have any intermediary format. Uh, and uh, everything is done on the fly using bioformats as highlighted. On the left hand side, I have the projects and data sets. The projects are the blue guys, the data sets are the green boxes. Uh, if I expand uh, one project, you can see that the project can contain data sets um, and then the data sets contain images. Okay. A uh, data set might be inside a project, but it doesn't have to. Uh, I have few data sets which uh, don't belong to any project, such as this SIR and AI HeLa data set, which you ladies and gentlemen have in your portfolios as well. So you can uh, explore with me. I can, for example, select an image such as uh, this one. And this one has 40 Z planes and uh, it's called Scrum16.r3d. Uh, uh, dot R3D. I have here in the right hand side when I selected that image uh, some uh, basic metadata already which were uh, read by bioformats during the import process. This was the second blue bar in Omero Insight right here. Okay, so during that import process the metadata were read and uh, the most important ones are displayed here such as pixel size, the type of the images, how many Z sections are there, how many channels and what's their name. And um, then some further metadata are um, stored in the under the acquisition pane. These are the original metadata as the name says here on the harmonica 
And again, these were read by bioformats. Uh, basically, if it's in the original file, then bioformats will read it. If not, then of course, no chance. And uh, these metadata typically we don't uh, encourage to change, but I will show you in a second how you can add um, additional metadata, metadata post import, which of course, you will and want to do um, uh, in, in uh, let's say the client or otherwise to uh, post hoc annotate your images. The original metadata might not be easy to read like this. That's why we have a we have a Omero model where we have simply a schema which says what, for example, a numerical aperture of an objective is. Um, and if uh, we find in the original metadata some value which uh, looks like a numerical aperture of the objective, we will overtake it and then display it, put it into the relational database and then display it in these harmonica tabs here uh, in a more user-friendly manner, such you can see under microscope, it's, it's much more benign. Uh, immersion is here, the, uh, the numerical aperture is here as well as mentioned. Further, uh, we have a preview tab on the right hand side where you can do first inspection. So just after import, which we just described uh, in full uh, with the metadata, uh, the typical scientist would uh, attempt to view the images uh, and for that he or she has to change the rendering settings. This is the manipulation of the um, of the slot of intensities, which will be displayed on the screen. Okay, uh, we call that rendering settings and you can uh, adjust it in the preview tab. By the way, if I adjust the rendering settings such as this on this image, watch what happens if I uh, save these unsaved settings, it will, this thumbnail will become more blue. Now it's saved. But mind you, nothing happened with the original file. We did not rewrite the original file. We never do that. Um, instead, the rendering settings were saved as an object in the Omero database. And um, you can imagine them as kind of a pair of goggles which you use and you can change uh, to view the original image, but the original image stays untouched. Now let's imagine a case where a scientist would uh, stain in the green channel for a protein of interest and then would like to, uh, then he grabbed or he or she grabbed a couple of images and put them into a data set such as SIRNAI HeLa and uh, would like to know, of course, very quickly whether or not uh, their staining worked. Uh, for that, uh, I can switch off to the uh, channels by clicking on uh, those boxes here, uh, except all except green are switched off. Then I adjust the green intensity uh, in this by sliding the max and min bars. And once I'm happy with this, I can cl click now on save to all. Uh, all here means all the images inside the data set. If I do that, then all the images inside the data set will uh, have now the same rendering settings on them. And I don't have to worry whether or not they are comparable. I know that they are because Omero may choose that for me. Now, many scientists will encode metadata into the names of the images, such as the case in, in uh, our case here. And you can, you can filter in the center pane for um, uh, for names of the images by clicking uh, on this drop down and selecting name. And then you go, for example, scrum, which I know these images should be stained. And indeed they are stained, so this looks good. Let's just check my control, which I know is highlighted by the name in, which stands for InSamp. And if I go for in, you can see that the control indeed is not stained. So this looks very good. And in this simple manner, if I remove the filtering by deleting the text, in this simple manner, I can see that my staining really worked and I uh, needed a very little time to, to verify that indeed. Okay, uh, what if I again select the image I was um, before on and uh, think further. So what uh, do we have here yet? Let me show you some cooperation aspects here. 
for example, I can uh, go and see what other people are thinking about my image. These are the thumbnails on the bottom of the right hand pane in the preview section. And you can, for example, see that uh, Florence Nightingale, my colleague in the uh, read annotate group uh, has navigated to my image. You know how to navigate to my image, me being here trained one. Uh, and she saved uh, rendering settings or uh, her rendering settings on my image. Uh, and I can now harvest her rendering settings on my image by clicking on the small thumbnail. Okay, that's, that's the one. And I can say save to all again. And this is train one overtaking the rendering settings of Florence Nightingale on this image. By the way, Florence Nightingale in her portfolio has also the same data set, but it's her images, okay? So there is an image for uh, each of you, uh, for each user, 50 copies of that. Uh, this is just for didactic purposes. Of course, this is not the typical situation, it's just this workshop setup, okay? But uh, what I wanted to say is that train one just uh, uh, overtaken the uh, rendering settings of uh, Florence Nightingale on his image. And uh, now, uh, yeah, these are the rendering settings of Florence Nightingale on the whole data set. If I don't like it though, I just think, yeah, okay, great. But I would like to go to the original rendering settings which were there when I started to work with the images, then I can go and right click on the data set, navigate to the rendering settings and say set imported and save. And it asks me where to change rendering settings. I say yes. And I am uh, back at the rendering settings, which were there when uh, the images were originally imported. Okay, very good. So I select that image again. 